What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final final little pass is a business. Dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, your horror safe haven. I'm Chelsea. And I'm James, and we're married, and I forgot my ring, and uh, we like to get scared together. I keep forgetting it. I haven't worn it in the kill counts I've done yet. Really? I know. I will for the That's next so one. Bad. I know. I'm sorry. People are going to think I'm I'm available. That's you're, not true. I feel like you're remembering how to be a person, though, after having COVID. I was locked in a room for 10 days straight. Mm. That sucked. Yeah. I'm <laughs> glad you're feeling better. Thanks. Me yeah. too. <laughs> you got to play a lot of Breath of the Wild, at least. That was mostly what I did. Um, that and it's fucking work. I finished the writing, rewriting the Stranger Things kill count and filmed an episode on COVID. Got dressed up as a little sailor in COVID. A little COVID <laughs> sailor. <laughs> the saddest little sailor. <laughs> All right. This week, we're kind of continuing our trend. It's not a trend if we've only done one episode, but last week I did some scp entries which are an internet thing and internet we're doing horror. another internet horror thing this i saw week. it called the new weird as oh, a I genre like name the new weird yeah yeah that's cool that's kind of cool yeah like what slender man kind of i don't know i don't want to i don't want to misconstrue what the new weird is i just simply saw a phrase thought it was cool clicked on it didn't actually read the wikipedia article so yeah, so we're, we're talking about the back rooms this week, which I bet people are going to get on our case because they think it's old now, which like... No, they won't. It's six months old. It's fine. Oh, that's true. The videos are... Yeah. I think old. they have to still be coming out. That last one we watched is just from a month ago. Yeah. And some of them have a month-long gap. I so. think this is ongoing, so this is not going to be an all-inclusive review of these because there's probably going to be more. I assume. Uh, as of... Our recording, there are 11 videos in the playlist on Kane Pixels' YouTube channel. Yeah. Kane Pixel, uh, the YouTube channel name of Kane Parsons, mm -hmm. who is 16, 17. Now, I think. He's yeah. 17 years old. Yeah. It's infuriating how good these are. They're some of the most unsettling things that I've watched in recent years. They the have such a specific aesthetic. And to be fair, the initial. Concept is taken from a 4chan post. That was from 2019. That yes, and mm -hmm. that's right. And the so the back rooms here. I'll read the I'll read the 4chan. Is it green post. text. Is what it's, it's not called. a green text. I no. thought it was a green text. No, because it's not the like in with the little arrows where it's. Oh, it's not that. No. Okay. It's not. I don't know 4chan. <laughs> yeah, I might know 4chan better than you. That's weird. That is weird. <laughs> I had really cool friends in high school. Um. My friend's brother was a mod. That guy was scary. He's probably on a list now. Dude, probably. All right, so this is the initial post from 4 Chances from a few years ago. It's a picture of this, like, very nondescript kind of hallway. It's like a non-purpose room. It's just a... They're, they're liminal spaces. That's what this is called. Yeah. Liminal spaces, which are stairwells. Uh, yeah, things you pass garages. through. Yeah, things that you're, hate... not, you're not meant to be there for long. Yeah, we use liminal too um, frequently because I feel like it's kind of an on-trend thing. You ever see that Twitter account, the liminal spaces? Twitter? No, but I have followed the subreddit. Okay, sure, sure. I think yeah. people get maybe a bit confused as to what liminal is. Is it like it, the term it... gaslight nowadays? Where just everything's sure, gaslight? Yeah, where it's just any room that's creepy, people call it a liminal space, but it's not. It's, it's rooms where you're not supposed to really do things that you move through them they're, mm, trans they're trans transitory yeah, yeah, rooms yeah. yeah so yeah the back rooms is kind of all liminal space and the the text of it goes if you're not careful and you no clip out of reality in the wrong areas you'll end up in the back rooms where it's nothing but the stink of old moist carpet the madness of mono yellow the endless background noise of fluorescent lights at maximum humbuzz and approximately 600 million square miles of randomly segmented empty rooms to be trapped in god save you if you hear something wandering around nearby because it sure as hell has heard you and so that's the initial post that just spawned this whole thing. People really latched onto this post. To be fair, it's if if I was 
maybe to give you the prompt of, okay, describe a creepy room. It'd be easy to say like, oh, it's dark. Mm -hmm. And it's maybe there's some cobwebs or it's kind of, you know, it, but this is just, it's such a specific It's very kind mundane. Of, yeah. I it, think, so we, we watched through this playlist and then we watched a couple of videos about it, including one from Matt Pat who went into it. And I think he mentioned just like their mundane everyday annoyances, the hum of the electric lights, wet carpet, like moist carpet, like uh, off yellow wallpaper. It's it's these things that are just kind of ugh, like, yeah. like everyday squicky stuff. Yeah, where it's not <laughs> obvious horror, but it's the stuff that just kind of unsettles you or that's uncomfortable to be around. The idea of just a nondescript room, I think you can just fill in so many of the gaps on your own, you know, you can kind of really just, your mind can go crazy as to what has happened in there or could happen in there because there's just no features to it. Yeah, and there's also the whole aspect of it being spatially illogical. And so that reminded both of us of House of Leaves. Yeah, Which yeah. I'm assuming Kane is a fan of. I don't know. He, maybe not, because, like, I didn't get around to reading that book until a few years ago. Yeah. But it's, it's like, the go-to reference for illogical spaces. and Yeah, at least it is for me. It's the first thing I think of. Uh, yeah, like, rooms that where the size inside doesn't match what it would appear to be outside. Yeah. Doors that, like, don't go anywhere or, yeah, it, it's awesome. It's very unsettling. I know I've talked on the podcast about how I want to get a House of Weeds adaptation made and have it By be different directors doing Yeah, the and have different directors stories. do all the different segments that then come together and, like, Kane Parsons would be great at that. Um, God, what is it? The, is it the Nav Navidson? Where it's the it's the found footage of the house originally. Mm. That is, it's kind of which is the best part of the book. It is. It's the scariest part of the book. Yeah, yeah for sure. But that would be pretty cool. I mean, we skipped around this like two and a half hour live stream he did. He seems just like a very nice young man. And he's uh, seventeen. <laughs> and at one point, when we clicked uh, to a random spot, he mentioned something about developing a feature film. And obviously, like, this stuff was released in January of this year. Mm -hmm. And that first video, which is nine minutes long, as of recording, has 32 million views. Yeah. So it got 32 million views. Gressel's face is just like, what the fuck? Uh -huh. Within uh, six months, which it's is awesome. Wild. Less it, than six months. I think it was because to the back rooms again was a concept that existed already and yeah. had its own i yeah, think it had hype. a wiki mm -hmm. and all this lore and he took a lot of you know that that initial concept and some of the lore and made it but he also has created his own version of what the lore behind the back rooms is yeah if you want to watch these for yourself i encourage you to because it's only about as of now, an hour worth yeah, of I stuff. Like hour. I said it's 11 videos, uh, but the longest is maybe Nine. 14 minutes. Oh, that's right. There is which one that's is about 14. It's the scariest one. Of my favorite. One, that think. one and the first one are my favorites. Yeah. And the, the first one's The longer ones minutes. really get time to... Yeah. Ugh, but I... some of them are just like a minute long. It's, it's uh, mixed media type stuff. Some stuff is an educational, informational video for the in-universe yeah, company. Yeah, internal company videos. Some are news reports. Some are just like slideshows of still images. Yeah, old archival stuff. Yes, and they're all done with this VHS aesthetic, which really helps the creepy element. You yeah. got the tracking lines and everything. The The audio sounds very lo-fi. You can't even understand some of the I like dialogue. that. I like half the time you can't understand what anyone is saying. It just feels... It makes it really feel like you're watching a degraded tape. It's mm -hmm. so good. And it, it's just so well done. And we were watching this initial tape, which, you know, is the most viewed one, the the nine-minute one just called The Back Rooms, published January 2022. And we're watching it, and it's, it's this found footage, first-person camera perspective moving through these spaces. And we're like, how did they feel? Like, where was this? Did they build something? Dude, it's all CG. It's all CG, yeah. It's all made in Blender, by this fucking teenager. By, yeah. And the fact that we're sitting there like, this is real? Where? What? No, that can't be because the budget, you can't just build this. It's insane. <laughs> so like how, and it's because um, people on Twitter kindly explained. I had a feeling it was maybe um, when we were watching and I was You were like, guessing. this can't be real. Yeah, yeah, I was like, it can't be real. That's insane. It has to be 
some kind of like 3D mock up. But and we like, were thrown off when we saw the people in yeah, it. Yeah, when there's people walking around in it. There's certain things that I didn't know how uh, he he did that I'll I'll explain in a second. But yeah, I kind of guessed that it was 3D, and because it is a found footage and it's VHS, he either put a ton of filters over it digitally to make it look a tape, or I kind of think he maybe made it, transferred it to an actual tape, and just transferred it back and forth a bunch of times. That would be dope. You know, between tapes to really, to like actually degrade it and make it look like VHS. And then that way you get all of the kind of tells of CGI, just get kind of airbrushed out a well, little bit. Well, what was the channel we watched with the CG guys that watching it? Cool. Corridor Digital, yes. I think is what they're called. Okay, so it was uh, a trio of dudes who know a lot about CG and yeah. watch and review stuff. You said they recreated the Luke yeah, Skywalker. Yeah, they're, they're an effects studio. Oh, okay, it. like an actual studio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I loved that video of them watching this and being really impressed by it. And they said the same thing. A lot of the times with CG renderings and things made in Blender, the giveaway is the... It's too perfect. Exactly. Yeah. There aren't imperfections. But with the VHS quality over it, that kind of masks over the unnatural appear, uh, appearance of it. Yeah. Um, another thing that hides it is that, like we said, we saw people in it and we're like, how the fuck are they? Well, they all have masks on, have mat suits. There are never faces and, because I think faces would be a giveaway that it's it's a digital yeah. creation. And then there was only one moment really that I thought was like, oh, I see, it is CG, is in that other long oh, one that we're talking falls. about, Pitfalls, which we'll get to. Uh, there is a, it, one of the guys goes further back in the shot and he's crossing over some stuff and his feet just kind of like do some weird motion, like kind of sure, like float yeah. over it. And I was like, oh, okay, it is CG. But yeah. other than that. It took us that many videos for us to be like, okay, definitely CG. Yeah, that's the 10th video in this yeah, playlist. Yeah. I, and what I didn't realize, because when we were watching him too, I was like, okay, if it's CG, how is he getting this really naturalistic um, hand cam movement? Because, As though someone is walking with the yeah, camera. Yeah, it feels very real and because that's the thing. Again, if you're going to try and fake that, it'd be really hard to uh, not make it too perfect. Like mm -hmm. the bouncing up and down and jittering. Like when you have an actual person with a camera, it's a lot more random and it feels real. And I guess the, the Corridor Digital video explained that what they think he did is he uh, basically filmed like... Uh, did like the choreography of the video with a camera and then used that camera like the motions of like those shots to then basically lay on top of this 3d environment he created so then this like map this like keyframe map essentially of this camera that he actually filmed like walked around and filmed then gets put into the fake environment so that it looks real because all that motion is actual camera motion just like put into which just Barely makes sense to me. I understand the concept. Yeah. Barely. I don't know how the fuck you can do that in practice. Yeah. It's insane to me. That how to me, good this is. I think, is the thing that really impressed me the most is the fact that it looks like someone's holding a camera because it would be easy to not think of doing that mm -hmm. and just have. And that it, would be that would kill it. It would. Yeah. yeah. It. I think just that extra step of filming it himself i don't know where like that would be so hard to get like all this he just must have it all in his head like knowing where everything is going to be and then putting that movement in this just going to put it out there i would love to interview i would that kid. love i have so many questions kane if I, I i don't know if he wants to give away how he made yeah, it or his, if he has his trade secrets yeah the q a was two hours we um, couldn't do that <laughs> we're very busy this week so maybe he has talked all about how he got it made. Yeah. But I would love to talk to him personally. I saw a Twitter about it. reply to when I mentioned we were doing the back room. Someone was like, Oh, they should interview Kane. They probably won't though. And I was like, I'm sorry. We would love to are you kidding me? I think maybe because he's young. And I was like, No, they, like I really We interviewed the Chucky kids. Yeah, for sure. Like, <laughs> we'll talk to kids. I we'll just, be the uncool uh <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I just I have so many questions just from a film background it's just insane to me that someone i couldn't do anything that cool when i was 16 or now or now yeah i couldn't <laughs> make the back rooms now yeah it's just it's it's really impressive also it's just fucking scary it is the last time i felt chills like this was when we saw annihilation in theaters 
I yeah. mean, there's even uh, one of them. They find a body in the room. It reminded me a lot of Annihilation. Yeah, because yeah. it's a body sitting against like a, a burnt wall. But it's covered in mold. Yeah, but yeah. it looked as though it was the same kind of like blast radius effect that yeah. is in Annihilation. Yeah. Very cool. It's just icky. It's just very uncomfortable. I don't know. Even just all the little mocked up graphics of the fake videos feel so perfectly of the time they're from because it, it all, all the videos take place in the early 90s uh late 80s in early, late 80s, 90s early yeah, 90s, yeah. Mm -hmm. i think the start of the timeline is 88 and then goes up to 91. That sounds that's the other right. thing is the timeline of these is a little wacky I went and read a lore explainer <laughs> to make sure i wasn't missing anything huge um if i had the time i would comb through all of these myself but there is a, a there's a series of articles on this website called the ghost in my machine.com that had really just very easy to understand kind of like just a timeline of what order they think the videos are okay. supposed to go in and stuff well, because there, they are out of order there is something from 82 it's uh it was, is one, that that initial test thing no uh, that... i don't know it's from the oak ridge national lab it's the spinning thing and then it yeah. breaks down. It's only like a minute and a half. It's the ninth video in the okay. playlist. Yeah, yeah. 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 So if you watch, because Kane has a video on, or a playlist on his channel where they're in a specific order. I think it's the order they were released in. Almost. One of them is out of order. It's weird. What? The, oh. Like, yeah, it was uh, the publishing date yeah. is a little bit out of order. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, uh, I think they have all of the, vi that playlist has all the videos except one unlisted one that we had to go and find ourselves. And that one was like a news report. Yeah, the news report. About the earthquake, yeah. which happens when they first open the gateway. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, there's like unlisted stuff and there's all kinds of hidden things in here. And I wish I had the time to kind of look for all that stuff myself. But unfortunately, I had to just read someone else's article about it. Yeah, it... Um, besides House of Leaves, other things it reminded me of uh, were two games that we've played. Antichamber yeah. and Super Liminal. It reminded me a lot of Super Liminal. And obviously Liminal, don't yeah. Make, yeah, Liminal. It's spaces that don't make sense and the feeling of being watched or followed mm -hmm. too is really big in that game. Yeah. Did we ever finish that? I think we, got a, we, we did. We got a few endings, but I don't know if we ever like completed it. Well, it was one of those games that I liked but didn't love. I forget why. Yeah, we weren't in love with it. I feel like it was anti chamber mostly, we love. Anti chamber is one of the best games I've ever anti played. Anti It so might cool. have, it might be long enough, Hans, since might we be, played it that yeah. we could play it again. I would play it. Again. That's one of those Eternal Sunshine games that I would just love to erase from my memory. Yeah. That, Curse of the Oberdin, and Return of the Oberdin, or Return of the Oberdin. Yeah. yeah, and probably Outer Wilds. Oh yeah, for sure. All those puzzly games. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I guess do we want to kind of just go through the videos? I guess, yeah. We can try. Yeah, the, I mean, the first episode is The Back Rooms. Uh, it's nine minutes long. Like I said, it's the most viewed one, and it's one of my favorites because the longer ones, like you said, give you time to really explore the spaces. Yeah. And this is a, a kid making videos with his friends. The, the character's name is Kane. Yep, yeah. yeah. And uh, it's it's a hilarious video. You called that. They say action and, and then, they then slate. slate. That <laughs> was my um actually moment watching these. Uh, it's a it's a but another it's, kid has like a stupid fucking like gorilla a, mask or something. Mask. Yeah, they're, they're clearly just fucking around and making a movie in their backyard, like both of us used to do with our friends. Although the slate is pretty fancy for just that's a good slate. Messing the around most we ever had yard. was a whiteboard slate. Yeah, but usually it was just clapping our hands. Uh, but the cameraman who is Kane. Uh, he kind of trips over something, and when he trips and falls backwards, he he clips into the back rooms. Yeah, and, and if you've remember. never played video games and entered cheat codes, no clip mode is when you can move through walls and shit. I've known about this since Doom as a classic uh, one where you can just no clip through all the walls and get through all the, the levels that way. Uh, and yeah, so this is no clipping through is there reality. there between clipping and no clipping? Uh, well, clipping is when you, like, get stuck on a surface. Oh, okay. Or, like, you're bumping up against a surface. So, clipping... But I know that, like, clipping through... Yeah, you can clip ...means through going through right? it. I think. I don't know. No clip mode means walking through. That's all I know from Doom. Yeah. But, yeah. But I think so, yeah, clipping... No can, clips into the it's background. It's like flammable and inflammable. Well, inflammable means it's not... No. Inflammable means it'll catch fire, right? What? Yeah, don't you remember Dr. Nick? 
Inflammable means flammable? What a country! Oh, is that how I learned that probably? <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah. That's I'm sure there is okay. a very specific scientific difference between them, but for our purposes, whether something is flammable or inflammable, you don't want to get aflamed by it. Huh. Yeah. So that maybe seems clip wrong. and no clip is the same thing. I don't know. You tell me, internet. <laughs> In a nice way. Our first sponsor this week is Shudder. Shudder has the best collection of horror, thriller, and supernatural movies, series, and originals. From Hollywood favorites and cult classics to acclaimed new movies you won't find anywhere else. So new in June, Shudder has Mad God, the stop-motion epic masterpiece from Phil Tippett, who did visual effects in Jurassic Park, Robocop, just to name a few. I really want to see this. And what's neat is often movies like this, they'll tend to screen in maybe smaller theaters, art house theaters that not everyone has access to. Shudder makes new stuff like this accessible, even if you can't get to a smaller movie theater to go see it. I don't know if it was just added, but I'm seeing here Shudder has listed In the Mouth of Madness as one of their notable titles. It's, I mean, what to say about that movie. It's one of John Carpenter's greats. Sam Neill at his best. Check out these movies and more on Shudder where there's an exclusive movie premiere every week. You can stream all of them and more from Shudder's growing library of great horror and thrillers ad-free for just $5.99 a month. Right now, you can stream your first 30 days of Shudder for free. Go to Shudder.com and use code DEADMEAT. That's S-H-U-D-D-E-R.com, code DEADMEAT. Stream free for your first 30 days by going to Shudder.com, use the code DEADMEAT. Our next sponsor this week is Fume. Look, it's really, really hard to quit smoking, and it seems like it's just gonna get harder. And it can be hard if you wanna quit because you're sick of putting stuff into your body and some of the quitting aids that you're using are still just putting stuff into your body, maybe just less of it. Fume is the natural inhaler designed for a better, safer, and more natural way to quit cigarettes. No smoke, no vape, and no nicotine. And it's meant to replace the hand-to-mouth habit of smoking. It's made from 100% Canadian maple, it's like a little pipe-looking thing, and it uses cores infused with plant oils studied to curb cravings. So they've got flavors like peppermint and other minty notes to kind of simulate menthol cigarettes. All their flavors are 100% natural, there's no chemicals, artificial flavors, and absolutely no nicotine. Quitting is really, really hard, but Fume can help. They've got thousands of five-star reviews from smokers who tried everything and this worked for them. I got one sent to me in the mail. I just tried it to see if it tasted good. It does. It's actually very, very pleasant. I particularly like the peppermint cores that they sent me. Whether you're a smoker or ex-smoker who still struggles with cravings, Fume is the perfect tool for you. It's time to create positive habits and quit naturally with Fume, and we're here to make it easier. Right now, if you head to breathefume.com slash deadmeat and use promo code deadmeat, you are going to save 10% off your entire order. That's 10% off your entire order when you head to B-R-E-A-T-H-E-F-U-M dot com slash deadmeat and use the code deadmeat. Our last sponsor this week is Hawthorne Men's Personal Care Products. Hi, James. You're a man. I'm a man. Yeah. I always got to be careful not to say that too loudly. <laughs> it gets really, really loud. I'm a man! <laughs> Sometimes when you're shopping for personal care products, don't you feel like you would like to have someone maybe there with you to be like, here's what you should get? Yeah, I'm a dumb, dumb man, and I need hand-holding and help uh, picking out products for my man body and man senses. Yeah, but Hawthorne has a very quick, easy quiz to help you determine which of their products is best for you. That's right, you don't need to be fancy to be told what will help you. I'm not fancy. I go to Limp Bizkit concerts. I wanted to take the quiz myself, <laughs> which was a little weird because I don't wear cologne. No, and you're not a man. No, but you know what? Whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever, man. It gave me a scent they described as light and aquatic, which Ooh, I like. You're like a little mermaid. Yeah. Or a merman. A merman. Go to hawthorne.co and use promo code DEADMEAT to get 10% off your first purchase. That's H-A-W-T-H-O-R-N-E dot C-O, promo code DEADMEAT, hawthorne.co, promo code DEADMEAT. All right, so he, yeah, he, no clips into the back rooms. <laughs> it's that, it's that yellow buzzy 
just hallways. And I literally gross. wrote, it's like the skeleton of a video game level before I knew that it was made in Blender and sure, possibly yeah. Unreal Engine, I heard was maybe used. I don't know. I don't know. This did make me want to finally take the plunge and learn Blender. I've had Blender installed. Oh, because it's free, isn't it? it? Yeah, and I started. Is it? I don't. It was. I downloaded it years ago, and okay. I started. I feel like I have started a learn Blender yourself course so many times, and just haven't gotten through because the stuff you're learning at the start, it's like learning an instrument. You're like, this sucks. I'm playing hot cross buns and I'm bored <laughs> kind of thing is the, the experience I was having with Blender, where yeah. it's like I'm learning how to make a really shitty looking donut kind uh -huh. of thing. But I, I do, I need to commit. And when I when it. I was teaching myself CS, CSS, is that the coding language? That was the same thing where it's yeah. like, cool, I made a website with a box on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he's walking around these rooms trying to just find anything. And they're creepy rooms and he gets the sense that he's being followed. And you get the, you, he'll like turn around and you'll just see the there's glimpse a, there's of something, something like something, yeah, moving behind a something wall. back there. And mm -hmm. right away the layout is weird. But now we, we kind of, after a while, start getting these weird size gaps in the walls and kind of square holes. I think this was one, because at first, you know, he clips, he no clips back there. And we're like, how the fuck did they make this? And then I think we were like, maybe it's just a real room and they did some stuff, but then you start getting the impossible, the like weird gaps that are, make no sense and mm -hmm. weird holes. And it's like, okay, this is clearly not a real building. Yeah, one of the images that you see is something that you said was online. He looks out a window and it's like, yeah. it's like the courtyard of an apartment building, but with a ceiling over it. And you can yeah. see windows across the room. I think I saw someone online say this came from Gary's Mod, perhaps. Really? But Did it come it from It is a very mod? unsettling image. I think God, mostly because there's a mod. ceiling over the courtyard. Yeah, and it's also got that kind of fluorescent kind of street light. Uh, there's just kind of, there's like weird patches of grass on the ground. I think, I think it's unsettling because it feels like a very, um, like dystopian. Here is the nature area of your, <laughs> uh, giant block of gray apartments. Mm -hmm. You can go outside here and there's not actually sky, but there's some grass and stuff. It's creepy. I've seen that image online. And I think it's cool that he included that kind of when you peek through a window. Yeah, another one that he goes to basically feels like it's the edge of the cube, the movie. Uh, yes. When he like reaches an edge and there's like yeah. a gap and there's more buildings and windows on the other side, but there's just this infinite gap Gressel in front of him. cube. You know, it's Cube 2 Hypercube. Cube 2. We got to do that. I would love to do Cube 2 Hypercube. Cube 2 Hypercube. We've been talking about doing that as an episode. I don't, not even Cube, just Cube 2 Hypercube for years. <laughs> and then he starts seeing writing on the walls. There's these black arrows scribbled on the walls. And he finds this writing that says, it's like, stay still, don't move. Yeah, don't move, stay still. Yeah. And that's when he sees this roaring squiggle man it's very tall it's very skinny. really upsetting yeah I, it's like a glitch on legs this article i was reading has i think probably the correct guess as to what that creature is and i like it a lot what is it i will explain the further we get into this or okay. else it's not as interesting the sound it's making is it's horrendous bad. it also reminds me of annihilation with the bear mm -hmm. that kind of mimics people and it's just blowing out all the, the yeah the, the audio. sound just is peaking it's very over modulated so bad i felt like this thing starts chasing him and i felt like it's kind of the minotaur in the in the lab yeah for sure you know this thing that just lives in this maze and he, he starts running around and is just trying to escape he runs through this kaleidoscope of rooms that's very cool it's just a bunch of like doorways that seem to go on forever and this thing is still chasing him through it yeah and then he goes into this hole in the floor and there's another layer down there and that's part of the back room's lore is that there's levels to it so the yellow area is level zero then there's level one which is it's more green it's that comes more industrial and then the layer after that is like like super industrial that's the like edge of the cube kind of thing oh apparently okay i could be wrong but basically this monster is chasing him around it's all these very cool visuals and then it knocks him down like a shaft and then he then he then all of a sudden he's 
flying through the air. Like he went skydiving. Yeah. Okay. So what happens is, okay. So after he, he like wanders around this area that he kind of falls down to it. I mean, it's all confusing. We don't need to remember the exact order of things. It's just a fucking nightmare. He ends up back in like the yellowy area. He climbs up some stairs. Oh yeah. The fire exit door, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Basically he turns around at one point. That thing is like right behind him and it, it uh, pushes him. But, uh, and this is what I thought happened. And I'm, Glad that I was right because I wasn't sure. I was second guessing myself. He doesn't fall. The camera falls. He stays in. And oh. apparently there is a split second image of that thing holding him up. Oh, no. Yeah. But it's just the camera that falls into. Into the air. Back what? into real life. Yeah. And, and that's how the, the footage is found and then uploaded to YouTube. Makes sense. But it's a it's so when he first when you first see that POV of just all of a sudden you're it, it, yeah, it looks like the camera skydiving. Uh -huh. It's so scary. And yeah, then it falls into the grass. And that's the end of that video. Yeah, which is Again, one of my favorites. Loved it. No wonder it was such a hit. Yeah. It's very fucking creepy. I guess looking back on it, because I've seen some people complain about the creature and they think it's eh. And that's kind of where you can maybe see some of the CG. Mm -hmm. I think because it happened, you see it so fast close up. And I am I also was fucking terrified that that was not anything I was thinking about. A lot of the times it's the camera like, he, looking back, seeing a glimpse of it, and then looking back forward yeah, yeah. to run more. So I think if you're really taking the time to look at it, you near can the tell end there, it, you do get longer glimpses of it when he's looking at it around a corner and sure, it's kind of walking yeah. slow. And sure, that looks the most CG, but it also looks like it could be a CG-looking monster in this real space. Yeah, like there is a CG thing. It's like a glitch monster. Oh, yeah. that would be. It definitely didn't bug me. Interesting. It was, I thought it was awesome. The second one is March 11th, 1990, archive.tar. Uh, this is a quick little two oh, yeah. minute, 48 it's just seconds this one. This slideshow of creepy rooms and, and men doing science with their, with their eyes, eyes blacked out. Yeah. You see one behind a, uh, like a two way mirror on a computer and he's looking through this mirror at the back rooms. Yeah, so, so they've set up an observation room. Mm -hmm. Apparently the, so the initial video, just the back rooms, that takes place last in this series so far. Yeah, and this just has, you know, still images, I think some maps, just, it's just a slideshow with some creepy music and yeah, sound. Yeah, it's fucking creepy. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, third one is the third test. The, another quick little minute 46. This says July 2nd, 1988. Yes, is uh, when this third test takes place. And this is the first time we see the threshold, which is a doorway set up in a like a big science lab and yeah. a bunch of equipment pointed at this doorway. And we just see it, it like begins to uh, like it morphs. Um, and this is the one with like just there's some dude talking the whole time. And I can't understand the fuck he's saying. Yeah, this you so can. Marvelous. We're talking about. The United States government is just running the science of lab again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can kind of pick out certain things, and mm -hmm. it, it creeps me out so much, yeah. that audio quality. I wonder if there are captions. Maybe. Yeah. That's another thing that really impressed me about this, too. The sound design? The sound is Very really good. good. And anytime there's people, it's really good. And I think that's maybe an overlooked part of what sells this, is it's hard to make people sound like they're real people doing a voiceover like that. And it's very good voice acting for yeah. the people walking around. They seem very casual. They seem no, like they're doing that's those what I mean, actions. Is yeah. It's like, I think the, the voice acting I was most impressed by was the autopsy. That guy just sounds like a guy doing like work where he's, he's recording like, okay, and we're doing, you know, he's doing the, the autopsy and mm -hmm. just kind of talking to himself. And it just sounds, just sounds like a real dude. I, I don't know. Yeah. Like, the decomposition process appears to have been stunted somehow. It, it's like, it's like portions of the body stopped decaying and, and were sustained. Uh, the fourth video is first contact again, about two minutes long. And this was test number six. And it is when they made contact through the threshold. So again, it's that doorway, and you see it begin to morph. Yeah, and there's, you see here guys say, Jesus Christ, turn it off. And then they're like, wait, but let's not turn it off, and let's see what happens. And just mm -hmm. blinding light comes out of it, and it shakes everything. And this was the, the opening 
through this doorway, through the threshold, into the back rooms. Yeah. And when, when the morphing is complete, you can see through that doorway those yellow rooms that we have come to be terrified of. I think this test is the one that there's an unlisted video that's a news report about the big earthquake in San Francisco in 1989. Yes, this, I, this was uh, in, October 17, 1989. Yes, okay, that is the date of that earthquake. Okay. Um, so this is kind of... And was that a real-life earthquake? Yeah. Okay, Yeah. so this is this is taking a real-life earthquake and saying this is why that happened. Yeah, as they opened this... They opened this threshold. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, bicycle built for two is, is like, playing lo-fi during it, just like an m- instrumental version. So it's creepy. Yeah, very creepy. Yeah. The fifth one is Missing Persons. This is about two and a half minutes, and it's a slideshow of various missing persons, mm-hmm. and uh, it shows on a graph that there was a huge increase in missing people after 1989, after that uh, that first contact was made. Yeah. Because apparently people have been clipping through and just disappearing. Yeah, so what much like Cain. happened is, and from kind of the lore explainer I was reading, mm-hmm. is that um, this Async, the company doing all this. Yes, and I don't know when that first pops up, the name, but yeah. Async is, yeah, the, the company behind so all this. So from my understanding is at first... Um, the U.S. government may have been involved, but then uh, they maybe pulled funding or something. Async is just doing this on its own. They're not like... Okay. Um, I think at one point they were. Uh, the SpaceX of backrooms? Yeah, and what their whole thing was is that they... And I think it's originally what got, what got them funding is they're experimenting on magnetic distortion to solve uh, like storage issues. Their whole thing is we can basically bend space to create infinite storage and i think the theory goes that they uh oh you know what? i think i think kane actually confirmed that they did not create the back rooms they like knew of it and so they were like trying specifically to access oh okay. the back rooms in these experiments so it wasn't a random discovery they were trying to i think so gain access either to. way it was they did not create the back rooms yes, that whether I it was intentional seen. or i i forget if like they already knew it existed or they were trying to do something else and then like whoa this, all of a sudden yeah. they find yeah this whole thing so that's what asyncs deal is where i'm not sure what made the us government pull funding but that's what's going on so at this point we're seeing how the back rooms were discovered what effect they're having with the missing people. And then this video is also the first oh, this one. This scares where we have, me so much. What, the guys in hazmat suits? The guys in the hazmat, finding the guy sitting there. It's really, it's it's just really creepy Well, imagery. it's also cool because you see a trio of dudes in hazmat suits walking around in the back rooms. But unlike Kane, they have this red rope that they're they're uh, feeding out behind them as a way to keep track of where they're coming from mm-hmm. and so that they can get back out through the way they came in. And it's like, okay, so we're approaching this from a scientific research standpoint, which I really like to see. And yeah, they do find the body uh, organic in nature, as they say, but it almost seems like fungus to them Mm -hmm. uh, against a wall. Yeah, it's a guy sitting with his back against the wall and it's just totally decayed. Really gross looking. I hate looking at it. It's just, it creeps me out. That face was in the thumbnail and it kept... Popping up in the, the thumbnail. The suggestive video. I was like, I'm not excited for whatever that's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to look at that thing. Yeah, it's real gross. Yeah. So the next one, the sixth video is autopsy report. Two, yeah. and a half lo- uh, two and a half minutes. And yeah, it's an autopsy report of that body that they found. Yeah. So uh, the guy who's doing the report says the subject, 18 years old, died likely mal- malnutrition. Important to note that the guy doing the autopsy... Um, and I, I didn't catch this because like it, there's so many details crammed into these. But mm. so this, the guy doing the autopsy is not like affiliated with async. He doesn't know where this asked, body. Where did you guys find yes, this? Yeah, he asks. And apparently on the TV at the end, you can see, uh, I, I think it's on the TV at the end, you can see his notice of termination. He gets fired because he's mm. asking too many questions. Okay. Uh, so this, this guy saying, okay, this guy, uh, subject likely 18, uh, likely died of malnutrition. Portions of his body stopped decaying, however, while other areas were completely taken over by mold. Then the TV turns on by itself in the office, and I, this creepy slideshow is playing on it, and I hated it. Oh, yeah. It's just all these... I don't know. I don't remember what every single image on it was, but there's an there's an image of the the dead John Doe that pops up in the slideshow. <laughs> I, was, I was not having a good time. <laughs> I wrote... 
I want to get off Mr. Backroom's wild ride. <laughs> I was so scared. There's also a door with a creepy red light. I just, I don't know. Just lots of creepy shit going on in that one. The next video is the internal instructional video yeah, about the informational being video. part of the KV31 research and development team. Yeah, this one's eight minutes long, so one of the longer ones. And this is this introduces you to a lot of the terms. The, the doorway is called the threshold. The back rooms themselves can be called the complex or various other terms. And it's Async's internal video just explaining some safety procedures. Never go in there by yourself. Have at least three people in groups. At least three people is interesting. I like that. So yeah. it's not just the two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes it scarier. Like what happened when they sent two people in there? It yeah. just some um, implied weirdness creeps a me out. Yeah, after some rules are laid down, we get a tape from February 29th, 1990. I find that interesting. It that doesn't exist. Date. It doesn't? Okay. It does not exist. Yeah, no. I, I was like, wait a minute. No, I think it's 88, 92 or the no, leap years. No, February yeah. 29th, 1990 does not exist. Makes but that sense. is when this footage is apparently from. Their voices are all muffled. It's a hazmat team. And this, yeah, we're back to the found footage. And they hear noises. Like crowd, like it sounds party. like a crowd of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from down a hallway. But only one guy hears it. He's like, guys, do you hear oh, this? Oh, and he goes and follows it. He gets separated. Yeah, and then when he he looks back, he's looking out through a narrow hallway and he sees his uh, buddies walk by and then they glitch out of existence and he's by himself. Yeah. And it sucks. <laughs> oh, it's so creepy. So this guy uh, is walking around. He sees... I don't know what he sees on the floor. It's like, I think it's some just of that mold. Or yeah. something, yeah. There's just, he just walks through all these weird conference room, feeling rooms. Uh, he walks into one room where there's uh, kind of these steps and this railing. And I think it looks like the one of the rooms we see later that Async made that's like an observation kind of oh, room. Oh, okay. Which, that's what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. And I had this suspicion and this lore explainer I was reading also came to the same conclusion that there's some weird time shit going on in these videos. Uh, maybe time travel or something. Uh, and this video, I think, is... I think the end of this makes sense if you think that there's time travel. Because what happens is he he just keeps walking around. I, I am curious, like, what's with all the shit he finds? Like the wheelbarrows and yeah. stuff? Yeah. He, well, he, he walks through a room that keeps getting shorter. It's like fucking Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> uh, he turns on a flashlight, and he finds this short room where there's all this tree wallpaper. It's like tree wallpaper. Yeah. And there's an axe leaning up against the wall and a bunch of wheelbarrows. I wrote, I hate it here. <laughs> then he sees the outside of a house, and... Then he ends up back in the yellow room. So he just walks by this weird, I don't know. I want to know more about that area. Then he sees a door on a wall next to a window and the door has a scanner. And when he scans his badge, it works. And so when he walks in, kind of call, he, he's like, hello. And then all these it, it red lights like, go on. Well, and... it looks like the observation room from mm -hmm. those stills because there's a window next to him with a computer on a desk. And yeah. I think it's the, the room from the still with the guy with the eyes blacked out yeah. observing the back room. Yeah, but there's no one in there and it looks pretty abandoned. Mm -hmm. uh, it That tracks with stuff we see in the very last video where those rooms get kind of boarded up and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so... But yeah, he calls out and then alarms start blaring. And yeah. it's like filled with red light. So I think maybe there's some time travel and he showed up like, I don't know how much later into this now abandoned room and that's why it set off an alarm because... Mm. At the very end of this series, we all the researchers kind of realize, oh, there's this fucking monster running around in here. And so they board all the research stuff up and they build like a blast door and stuff and kind of uh, just abandon it. So I think that's maybe what he wandered into. And that's why there's an alarm system mm. just in case. So. Yeah, I mean, that would make sense with the non-existent date that this takes place on. Yeah, it's yeah. like time is funky. That's mm -hmm. also why I think the body that they find is possibly Kane? Maybe, yeah. Because it doesn't make sense chronologically, but I think just story-wise, it's the most satisfying if it's Kane because he, like I said, he does get, he stays behind. The thing grabs him. Yeah. It's all very complicated. Just us, like, just mainlining this in a day, just trying <laughs> to understand all of the nuances of this story. It's really difficult. The next one's only four minutes long, but I really liked it. The motion detector one. Yeah. And this uh, is recording on... 
uh, the night of March 5th, 1990, they set up a whole bunch of motion camera. Dude, when I saw that, I was like, fuck no. It, it, it's just, it's like paranormal activity. Yeah, exactly. As soon exactly. as they're getting out the motion detecting shit. Because each like, clip is fuck. prefaced with like, first recording, three researchers walk by, and then it shows you and in the background, three, re and then ne next recording, same researchers return, and it shows that. And it's like, uh, the sound alarm set off a recording of them closing the threshold. Okay, and then hours later, after the threshold's been closed and no one's in there, it's like, sound recording, unknown yeah, source. Yeah, TBD. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, because we have, we have cameras on our house. Yeah. And every single time the motion detector gets set off, it's either one of us stepped outside to grab something and we forgot to like turn the thing off. Or it's a fucking bug. Or it's a bug it's like or a spider something. in front of the camera. But every time it happens, I just wonder, is this going to be the time that there's some fucking crazy shit Well, it's because it's, it doesn't even say motion detected. It says person lingering. Like that, that's the, that's so the message creepy. we get on our fucking phone. Like camera and it'll be at 3 a.m. and then the, the one in the backyard goes off and it's like, like make it less lingering. scary please it's so upsetting <laughs> this this is what i wrote too that the most impressive shots to me in all of these are the ones that have people in them i don't understand how the people even if they are in hazmat suits they look real like they look good they just like just the way that their little mannerisms and just it just i think because it's not too perfect it's mm. something about the way that they're I don't know how it, I, I have, we need to find this child and interview him. <laughs> yeah. Tell us all your secrets. <laughs> the last shot, the last kind of motion detected is there's something on the ceiling. I thought it looked like a person's legs. Something like, like that. Like an upside down person, but. I thought at first it was the monster like walking and then seeing he's being recorded and then like, whoop. <laughs> like, whoop. Yeah, well apparently if you put this in the order of like dates, mm -hmm. um, this is okay. I think this is like the first sighting of there being like anything in the back rooms. And okay. it's basically, it's kind of like tendrils of this like mold or like this pear. Like the mold is the sentient kind of thing. Like uh -huh. that mold that's all over that person that they find mm -hmm. in the back rooms. And so that kind of starts to explain what the monster running around is. And uh, oh, yeah, I guess now it makes sense to. Uh, reveal what I think is the correct answer for what the uh, what this creature is. And I think it's really creative and neat, and I, I hope it is the case because I think it's a satisfying answer to, like, what this thing is. So the description of the back rooms itself is, like, all the carpets are moldy, and, like, that's kind of an inherent property. Mm -hmm. So there is this sentient kind of black mold that, like, just lives in the back rooms, but it takes the form of something and that something if you watch it walk around it has a very like stilted like it's got kind of like stick arms mm -hmm. and they leave these tripods in the back rooms these motion these cameras and i forget how many they leave back there but if you look at the creature it looks like a fucking tripod oh. so the theory is like it took over like tripod and camera and is like Oh, animating yeah. and walking around. That's why it looks Someone like Someone said, either Matt Pat or, or those guys who were reviewing the footage said that. It that looks like it a tripod. Them of a yeah. Tripod. yeah. Yeah. So that's what some people think it is. Oh, and I think cool. that that's a cool description. Yeah. They accidentally gave it a form. In a weird way. It's like they both did and didn't create this thing. They, yeah, they gave it something to kind of pilot around, I guess. <laughs> it's really creepy. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. I like that. Uh, the ninth one is is the real short minute and a half. That's the one that's 1982 from the Oak Ridge National Lab. This one I didn't quite get. Oh, is that the kind of like spinning stuff? Yeah, must have just been. I think the that's beginnings the, of the video that tells us that there was government involvement. Oh yeah, Oak Ridge, Oak Ridge is real lab. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, that yeah, makes yeah. sense. Uh, the tenth video might be my favorite, Pitfalls. Pitfalls is so is, Between good. that and the first video, those two are my favorite for sure. It's yeah. also the longest one. It's 14 minutes long. Yeah. And it takes place on my birthday. Hey. May 6th, my one-year birthday, one year 1990. Birthday. And yeah, this is, uh, sorry if you hear sirens in the background. Yeah. Uh, they're coming to get us for tell, telling you too much about the back rooms. Uh, yeah, this is another research team walking around in the back rooms. They've got the red tape. Uh, or the red line or whatever, making them keep track of where they are. 
and they're like, oh, wow, this is a new one. They find a room with a bunch of square holes in the oh, floor. Oh, man, this made me so anxious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just this grid of holes in the ground. It's um, one one of the researchers just walks across it, and it it's terrifying. Yeah, it's like a grid of spaces, and he walks across to the other end where there's a door, and he enters the door, and he's like, you got to get the camera over here. Get, get that camera over yeah, here. Yeah, I want to know what that guy I saw. Know. I hope we get answers. I want answers. Because it was very green and glowy looking in there. And that guy seemed like, no, you got to cross this very treacherous fucking grid and then to get this on camera. Whoever Marvin or whoever the fuck like is the Marvin, one with the yeah. camera uh, tries to cross over to get to him. And the he fucking falls. Marvin Dude, falls. Dude, my stomach went into my butt. It was so, <laughs> it just, ugh, I Big don't know. Butt stomach moment here. Yeah, where he falls through and he um, ends up in this area where there's, it looks similar to where he was, but the, he says the wallpaper is greener. And then he like looks down a hall and sees a red light coming from a hole at the bottom of the wall. So he makes his way down there and he looks through this hole and the red light is coming from street lights or other lights. It, he's looking down a street that's yeah. out at night. There are stars in the sky and a bunch of houses and street lamps. Yeah, and he that's when he starts to hear yelling. Yes, another person. Yeah. Like he hears like, a hey. person. I'm already fucking freaking out. I know, it's so creepy. It. Yeah. So he sees one of the houses on the street God's lights on, so he goes in there and And like it, what's really interesting is it's it's like basically a single block of street. There's the wall behind him that he he came underneath. And it's a tunnel. It's like a mountain tunnel. Exactly. And it's like a mountain tunnel on the other side. Yeah. It's like the it's like Toontown. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the tunnel to Toontown on both sides of a street with mm-hmm. houses on either side. And so yeah, he goes into the last house on the left, isn't it? It is the last house on the left. Oh, is it? That the he last goes into, house on I think. The, oh, that's... I wonder if anyone's pointed that I out. I just realized that, yeah. And for the first room that he goes in there, there are fucking street signs coming out of the carpet, and they're like yeah, the, mirror image. The image-ed. walls are are this bright blue color, and there's Which these... is weird, because we haven't seen that color in these videos. Yeah. It's all been yellow and green. That's what I mean. It's like, the aesthetic of this is just so cool and weird, and... Yeah, these, like, street signs, they're all the same street sign. They're like a... I don't know what it is. It's like a, yeah, kind of diverging Arrows, roads yeah. kind of thing. And all the signs are reversed. They're all mirrored. Then he's there's another hallway at the back of this room. And that's where he hears, like, th- that yelling is louder. Like, it sounds like there's definitely a person. He even says, oh, shit, I think a person's been living down here. Oh, there's yeah, stuff there's newspapers and, and chairs. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so he, like, keeps going deeper into this house. And then he's looking down the end of a long hallway and he sees that fucking monster and just, he's like, that's not a person. That's not goes, a fucking that's person. That's not a fucking person. And so it good. starts chasing him. And I'm so scared. I'm so scared. I can't believe this guy survives this. Movie. I know. You're like, you're not going to make it, dude. Because he has to run back down the street, under the wall, get back to the, the hole that he fell down. Yeah. And they like they feed s- a line yeah, with a briefcase. They the sent like a, so he, I think he could put his feet on it oh, and they okay. could pull him up. Yeah. yeah. And they pull him up. And but then they it, get him out. Yeah. That ends. It was very creepy. And then the last video uh, is Six Minutes. It's Report, I guess. Um, yeah, and this is an actual, like... This has live-action people. Movie. In. Yeah. It's not found footage anymore. This no. is just more straightforward. It's probably my least favorite. Me too. I I kind of... Uh, I think it's ambitious. Like, it's... it's I think it's showing where this is going to go, and it is really ambitious and cool, but I do kind of miss all of it just being this found footage and i don't necessarily need like it to be a movie this is the only time where i'm like these are actors yes you know same everything else it feels very natural real voice performances but you get these people watching things and then there's the the guy like walking through the facility and it just feels like more like a low budget film yeah as opposed to like actual found footage and it also i think then kind of breaks the illusion of this person found all this stuff and is putting it on youtube Mm because then it's like you're watching this more straightforward movie and it's like well who's filming these guys yeah it's more like a narrative movie it's a narrative thing Mm -hmm. yeah it's it's fine yeah Uh, but they're they're making calls to because they they see the footage of this monster because that guy's brought it back with him because they're survived. watching the pitfalls video yeah the yeah. Previous one, yeah and that's when that call gets made and that's when there's a time lapse of construction and the back rooms are getting 
boarded up, or at least that part of the back rooms is getting boarded up. Yeah. And um, that's that's all there that's is where for it now. Is. I don't know if there's more coming up because this could be the ending. You know, they're boarding yeah, up the it, section. It would make sense as an ending. Um, but I hope that there's more. Yeah, we're definitely interested in it. We're definitely interested in uh, talking to Kane if he wants to, to Mm -hmm. divulge secrets or not. Yeah. uh, That'd be cool. Oh, there was another unlisted thing that we didn't see. It's super short. Uh, It's in the description of this last video report. It's a video titled 9780415263573. And it's a traffic cam video. And uh, there's a car that like, leaps that like blinks out of existence like a oh. whole car clipped into the back rooms apparently oh, i'd love to see that so yeah like the car in the back rooms i'd love to see that. uh this article also points out the reason i read the string of numbers in the title that is the isbn number for the yellow wallpaper the, oh <laughs> yeah so i thought that was interesting and so this this author was like he probably like read that in english class in school that year and you know what i mean because oh oh the yellow wallpaper the short story yeah oh okay yeah ha, that's great that's mm-hmm. genius because mm-hmm. that's in that story <laughs> yeah, probably read that in school this that's what i mean is like he, he right literally was probably just assigned that in school <laughs> but in that story yeah it's a young woman who is she has i think postpartum I forget, and she gets, like, locked in her attic by her husband, and there's this yellow wallpaper, and she becomes convinced that there is another woman, like, in hidden. The like, in the wallpaper. It's very which, good horror literature. Yeah. When's it written? Eight, late 1800s. Yeah, very and, good, very creepy. Yeah, and that um, kind of, I mean, that sounds, you know, yellow reminds wallpaper. me of the back rooms, mm-hmm. too. This, yeah, something in this space that doesn't make sense. Anyway, that's the back rooms. That's the back rooms. Very cool shit. Again, haven't felt that uneasy watching something in a long time. People were requesting this other thing called the is it the Mandela catalog. I Googled it real quick. I no, that's gonna be too scary for me. Oh, I'm interested. <laughs> we can try watching it, but I was I was looking very briefly at it and I was like, man, I don't know. Well what <laughs> was, was that so other scary. uh YouTube channel with the really creepy shit? There was like a drive uh dash Oh cam that one. news channel. Yeah. Shit, I forget what that's called. Those are so fucking scary. I fucking love those. Those were so scary. One one of them was like a, a government message that the country was being invaded and was like basically telling everyone to kill themselves. It was really fucking creepy. Yeah. Loved uh, it. Yeah. I forget what those are called. Yeah. Those you, are old at this point. Well, now you're sounding like a fucking but I teenager mean, on the I internet. I mean, if we're talking internet, like those are 10 years old, maybe. You think they're that old? I thought they were more like five. No. Oh, well, still. I mean, I just love that that these uh, these videos are so effectively creepy and they're just made by people and put on YouTube for free. Yeah. We didn't have this growing up. I, I highly recommend you go check them out for yourself again. Yeah. Not that much of a time commitment. And uh, even if you don't want to go through the whole playlist, at least watch that first video on Pitfalls. That's also just... minimal jump scares. There's like kind of, there's some jumps. I don't know about that. In them, but. I got I got jump scared a few times. <laughs> man. Yeah, it's but it is more cheap, of a sense though. of unease and creepiness. Yeah, 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 which is better and scarier. Yeah, mm-hmm. I guess like housekeeping stuff. We're gonna be at RTX. Yeah, I'll put all the information in the description. But we'll be in Austin, Texas, we will have a, a meet and greet. Yeah, and a panel. Yeah, the panel will be at one p.m. on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Uh, check the itinerary for the room. I think we're in. A ho- the Hilton or whatever the hotel is. We're not in the convention center. Oh, we're not center. in the convention center? No. Okay. So you have to make a little bit of a walk, but I think there's like a skywalk over there. It'll be fine. Yeah, it's it. it's close. Yeah, I remember it They're all connected. Really close. Um, There's that. We have new merch. I'm yeah, wearing. Yeah, we got new merch. Let's get to the kill shirt. Yeah. There's an awesome Lucy one. We have some Lucy merch, and there's going to be more coming we're working on it mm-hmm. tomorrow from when we're filming this the black phone interviews i did come out that oh, i was also yeah. i also had covid while doing oh, which man. is why Chelsea, that's why i couldn't be in them yeah. because it was it was like either one of us had to it, it yeah what a mess so check those out if you haven't and uh you know kill counts they're weekly now we just got the footage back from my interviews with the cast of Note. That was one that you did by yourself because I had COVID and couldn't go. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't want to infect Kiki Palmer with COVID. No, so. that would be tragic. She uh, was so sweet. She's my favorite now. I can't wait to watch this footage. Yeah. And then we'll see when that's going to come out. Probably close to Nope's release date. Yeah. But yeah, Kill Counts and Podcasts. 
coming at you yeah with regularity i think after next week because what i'm going to try to do is have our podcast panel released as its own episode fingers crossed fingers crossed we can make that happen um so if we do that i think the week after that i want to start maybe doing our themed it won't be themed summer because we're getting a l- started a little late mm-hmm. but it's still summer so maybe it's still summer counts. for a while yeah we're gonna do uh, what I call blanky blank movies, which are the all those movies where I feel like they're almost their own genre, where they're always supernatural, that are like the uh, haunting of a girl's first name kind of. The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Yes. The Autopsy, Autopsy of, of Jane, Jane Doe. Doe. The there's a whole bunch of them. They're just this weird little subgenre that I haven't seen a lot of because they all kind of sound the same to me and I would like to actually see them. Yeah. And we've gotten a lot of requests for movies within that little subset, so this will take care of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, great. That all sounds good to me. Yeah. Um, you know, follow Dead Meat on social media at Dead Meat James on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And I'm at Carebeck, C-R-E-B-E-C-C on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want merch, deadmeatstore.com. Yeah, do that. Until next time, I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and this has been the Dead Meat Podcast. Thanks, Gressel.